from Southeast Kansas. I'm Jonathan Switzer, and this is another episode of This Robotech Thing. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. Um, I was about to talk about hoops and predictions for 2013 when, well, we ran out of time. Uh, so we'll be doing that at the end of the show. But to start off with this week, uh, we'll be casting ourselves back to the 1980s, the immediate wake of the uh, Sentinels fiasco. Uh, Harmony Gold dubbed a number of features in the wake of Sentinels, and a couple of those were based on E.E. E. Doc Smith's Lensman stories from the first half of the 20th century. Uh, the Japanese got a hold of the rights to produce Lensman animation in the early 1980s. Uh, the first result was a 1984 feature film, uh, which was co-directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who would go on to do Ninja Scroll, Vampire D. Bloodlust, Wicked City, the Highlander anime, uh, several well-known and popular anime films. Um, Lensman is an entertaining piece of work, but for our purposes, there's one really interesting thing about Harmony Gold's version of Lensman. Now, we, what we are looking at is the Harmony Gold version. Um, it would be later redubbed by Streamline Pictures by Carl Masek. Masek wasn't actually involved in this dub of Lensman, although one piece of casting from this version still stands in the Masek dub. Uh, Kerrigan Mahan, who played Sean Phillips in the Robotic TV series, and Jack Baker in Robotech 2 The Sentinels, and Mark Landry in Robotech The Movie The Untold Story, plays Kimball Kennison in both versions. Uh, but take a listen to this uh, bit from the opening to Lensman, Secret of the Lens. recognize that? On the Robotech soundtrack CDs, that clip is called The Young Warriors. It's the bit that plays during Jack Baker's ill-fated simulation sequence in Robotech 2 Descent. Now, as I said, that's, uh, that was called Secret of the Lens by Harmony Gold. Now, the Lensman movie was followed up with a TV series in Japan. And Harmony Gold got several episodes of that and strung them together into a movie that they called Power of the Lens. It's an altogether different adaptation of Lensman. Uh, from what I understand, it's a lot closer to the novels than the movie, which is sort of the Lensman character names and concepts and some of the alien races sort of tacked onto a very Star Wars uh, story framework. So let's take a look at the opening to Lensman Power of the Lens.
likes that. It's a totally reorchestrated version of the Young Warriors. Now, what was interesting about watching Secret of the Lens, as I did uh, last week, uh, was the fact that all of the music in Secret of the Lens seems to be music that was created for Robotech 2 Descendants. Uh, there were pieces I didn't recognize in there. But it was all of a sort of similar style. And some of the unfamiliar pieces used uh, cues and phrases from familiar Sentinels music. And some of the music in there may not have appeared in Sentinels, but it appears in the section of the soundtrack that's all Sentinels music. Uh, Power of the Lens actually used three clips from the original Robotech TV series soundtrack, and while the version of Secret of the Lens that I saw didn't have the credits on it, I did check out the credits on Power of the Lens, and the music credits were to Michael Bradley, Steve Whitman, Jack Allen Goga, who as we previously established did the music for uh, Captain Harlock and the Queen of a Thousand Years, and I believe it was Arlen Ober who probably did all of the Robotech original TV series tracks. So, no extra credits. It was, you know, the guys who did Sentinels, the guy who did Harlock, and one of the original Robotech uh, orchestrators. So, interesting bit of business how Harmony Gold just sort of used this stuff as library music to dub over the Lensman animation. Anyway, we're going to move on from here uh, to some Robotech news. Let's run the bumper. Okay, present day Robotech news. Uh, as we did a few weeks ago, we're going to look at one bit of unofficial Robotech news and one bit of official Harmony Gold Robotech news. And this time we're actually going to start with the unofficial. Um, this has been floating around on the internet for a little bit now. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, you're going to be in for a treat. We'll watch uh, just a few seconds of this uh, because I really want to direct you to their website and uh, to their copy of the video. Estamos ante la prueba irrefutable de la presencia de vida extraterrestre. Recuerdo, veamos qué puede hacer este bebé. That is a Robotech fan film that is in production right now called Robotech Valkyrie Project. I believe it's being done down in Argentina. Now, Robotech has a really big fan following in uh, Latin American countries, and uh, some of those fans, there's an obvious love for this show from the folks who are doing that, because seriously, if you didn't love this show, would you put that much effort into creating such gorgeous, wonderful uh, CG mecha? Oh my god. You know, it's fantastic. It is really fantastic. And I hope to God these guys get their film done um, before Harmony Gold issues a cease and desist order like they did with Robotech Genesis guys a few years ago. You know, there's always that danger when it comes to unofficial Robotech projects. And this one is nice enough and classy enough and flashy enough that... Mm, mm, I wish these guys all the best. I really do. Moving right along, uh, we've got some Robotech Palladium Books RPG news. Um, right now, uh, Palladium Books hopes to get their UEF, UEEF Marines book out in the spring. So, fingers crossed on that one. It's it's Palladium, so, you know, uh, release dates are always sort of in a state of flux with them. Um, and, Robotech RPG Tactics Defense of Macross Island, the first set in their Robotech Miniatures game, 
will hopefully be out uh, by Gen Con in the fall. That's where they want to launch it. That's well underway. I am, as I've said before, I am way hyped for this just for the prospect of little one, uh, what is it, 285th. Uh, that seems to be a, uh, I, I don't know anything about miniatures games, but as I understand, that's a fairly standard scale. A uh, one 285th scale. I want, I want, I want a table full of little Southern Cross mecha dudes. I, I just want that. Can I have that? Well, according to Palladium Books, I can have that. They are hoping to, as quickly as they can, have the full range of Robotech mecha in this thing. So, that is the one thing I'm most excited about uh, for the near future. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, with all that said, uh, we're going to move right on to a uh, Robojunk get. My first unsuccessful RoboJunk yet. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a sec. Alright, so this is going to be a fun one. So I get an email in my eBay account um, yesterday. And it's from the guy who sold me this. And he's like, oh crap, um, I think I sent you the wrong thing. The guy I sent uh, another Robotech item to emailed me and said, hey, uh, hang on, I, um, I, got, uh, I got this thing. And he's like, oh no, oh no, I was supposed to send it to that other guy. Would be me. Um, so we're going to find out what's in here. You and me together, and we'll see if uh, somebody is um, wrong, or if, um, in fact, I have the wrong item. See how exciting this is going to be? I don't even know what's in this box. I don't even know. So, I'm going to use the scissors here to, to open her up. This is This is compelling viewing, isn't it? What's in the box? We don't know what's in the box. You and me both don't know what's in the box. All right. There's uh, there's a bunch of bags in the box. That's what's in the box. Oh no! It is. It's an Invid Shock Trooper, and his arms disconnected, and his. Uh... But yeah, I totally have one of these already. I totally have an Invid Shock Trooper already, and that's not what I was. Uh, that's not what I ordered. But yeah, I do like the Shock Trooper. Look, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a grippy claw. You know, two, uh, two adjustable laser cannons and a cockpit. You can put a, a Korg figure in there, or you can, you know, take a Korg figure and paint his hair blonde, and you can be that one guy from that one episode who doesn't really have a name. I think they called him Fade in the comics. You know, the other Invid. Uh, Humanoid dude. Oh, and look, his arm's on wrong. The screws are showing on this side. But yeah, this is somebody else's invid. This is not my invid. I ordered something different. So, yeah, back into the box he goes. And, uh, yeah. Behold, an unsuccessful Robo, Robo Junk get. I got somebody else's invid. Okay, and now here we are. Hopes and dreams and uh, crushing reality for 2013. One moment here. Let me, let me get. Let me get ready. Let me get. Oh, 2013. Okay. So, what would be the best case scenario for 2013? as far as the Robotech franchise is concerned. Well, I hate to say this. I absolutely hate to say this. Because I don't like to wish ill will on people. You know, because sometimes karma and payback can be, a, a, well, you know, it can be bad. Um, but, I think the best thing that could happen to Robotech in 2013 would be Tommy Yoon. 
um, either stepping down or being fired from Harmony Gold. And the reason I say that is because, holy crap, I think he's been in that position, sort of overseeing the Robotech franchise for longer than anybody ever really has. I mean, you know, back in the 80s and even into the 90s, Carl Masek was the guy. He was actively in charge of Robotech for, what, maybe two or three years? You know? Because after Sentinels, there wasn't any grand overseer of Robotech, you know? When somebody was making Robotech stuff, you know, Harmony Gold just sort of... You know, there was nobody, you know, maintaining a level of quality. There was nobody, uh, you know, maintaining a strategic vision for how the universe could and was supposed to run, uh, you know? There really wasn't any of that. Um, you know, Masek was still sort of looked at as, you know, sort of the, the visionary. If anybody had a question about, you know, the way Robotech should be, they could go to him and say, hey, you know, hey, Carl, you know, what, uh, what's this supposed to be like? Well, and then he could go on about, you know, um, how Sentinels was going to be, and, uh, you know, what he sort of had, you know, roughly outlined for Robotech 3, The Odyssey, and all that. But he wasn't day-to-day -day running the show. Tommy Yoon has, since about 2000, 2001, been day-to-day -day running the show. And, uh, you know, what have we gotten out of it? You know, one pretty good video game, one kind of eh video game, you know, a Game Boy game, um, you know, Robotech the Shadow Chronicles, some you know, tepid undercooked comics, and uh, Love Live Alive in production. Um, well, just recently ceased production. You know, it's done, but it's not out yet. Um, and, uh, you know, he's sort of drawn up some ideas for Shadow Rising, but, I mean, that... You know, that's still in very early pre-production because they stopped when the live-action thing was going to happen. So, uh, but the, the fact remains, I think we've seen Tommy's vision of Robotech. I think it's time, after over a decade, for some new blood, for, for us to see somebody else's vision of Robotech. Now, here's the reason I don't want this to happen. Here's the reason I, I think, as good as it would be for the franchise, um, it would actually be kind of annoying. Because if you look back, you know, Robotech to the Sentinels, we have comics, we have novels, we have RPG manuals, and we even have a, uh, a movie of sorts. But we still wonder, what would that TV series have been like? Even if the vaults opened and we saw the finished scripts and we saw what was completed of the storyboards and, uh, you know, we saw every last scrap of Robotech 2 The Sentinels production materials, we still wouldn't know what Robotech 2 The Sentinels was going to be. Robotech 3000! We've got that little clip of animation on the special edition of the Robotech the Shadow Chronicles DVD and on the Blu-ray. You know, uh, documents were drawn up um, you know, with character bios and uh, a sort of a lay of the land in the far-flung future of the Robotech universe. But we're never going to know what that TV series is going to be like. And now we do have Robotech the Shadow Chronicles, but that ends on a cliffhanger. That ends on sort of the same cliffhanger the TV series ended on. We don't know where things go from there. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go the rest of my life wondering where Robotech the Shadow Chronicles was going to go. I don't want the complete shadow cycle of OVAs to turn into a big mythic thing like 
the Sentinels TV series, or even to a much lesser extent, Road Trek 3000 TV series. On the one hand, I sort of don't want to elevate it up to the level of big mythic thing, but at the same time, I want to know where this was going to be going. And so, on the, this level, on the level of wanting to know where this is going, I want Tommy to stick around, finish the Blasted Shadow stuff, and then he can, you know, move on to whatever pastures he wants to go to. Whether they be, you know, greener or, you know, you know, brown and withered. Uh, wherever he winds up, you know. So with all that said, where do I see Robotech going in 2013? Um, I don't see it going anywhere in particular. I see it sort of you know, sitting in a holding pattern. Uh, I don't necessarily see Love Live Alive coming out in 2013. Maybe it will. I hope it will. I don't want to have to sit here and wait on Love Live Alive. People I know, people I trust, you know, keep saying, you know, it's basically a DV extra, isn't it? You know, 70 minutes, you know, it's sort of a... OVA, uh, you know, direct-to-video feature length, but uh, with the structure I expect it to have, yeah, it is just kind of a DVD extra. Um, and I don't want to wait a whole other year for a DVD extra. It better come out this year. I still sort of see it coming out sometime in 2014. Because, um, I mean, we've got the, uh, the Palladium Books products I just mentioned, those will be coming out this year. Toy Nami, I don't, I don't really know. Um, you know, they're supposed to have that uh, Shadow Beta out this month. I don't see that happening. You know, I don't know, I don't know if we're ever getting that uh, Glog. Uh, the, the little picture I had up in the corner of the Glog uh, last week, that was from 2011. So, are we ever gonna see that? I, I honestly don't know. Toinami doesn't hasn't really been uh, into doing Robotech stuff pretty much since you know they did those two masterpiece cyclones. You know, I mean, when they got their um, Veritex out, they were pretty much oh well, that's what we wanted to do. <laughs> uh, we wanted to do our version of the uh, VF1 Veritech fighter. Uh, we, we, we could we could we could stop there. So, yeah, I don't see any comics coming out. Not after that nonsense Kevin McCaver said at, uh, you know, New York Comic Con. If those guys go to any conventions, and they will, you know, whatever conventions those guys go to, I want to see panel reports, and I want to talk about those on the show. So if you find any panel reports when they start doing them again, send them my way. Yeah, that's definitely something I want to talk about in the months to come. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be a rough one, guys. I think it's going to be a rough one. Um, but, you know, I'm going to keep on doing the show through it, and if anything good happens, I'll be here to, you know, lay praise on it, and if anything bad happens, I'll be here to, um, tell you it sucks. So. <sighs> Happy 2013, everybody. With all that said, uh, this is Captain JLS signing off for the week. Um, you know, I'll see you in a week. This Robotech thing is so exciting, I just couldn't give it up. It just gets in your blood or something, I don't know.